Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at solution of triangles. I'll be covering how to use the cosine rule or the cos rule, the sine rule as well as how to find the area of triangles. Let's look at this question. We have triangle ABD and then we have three lengths given to us as well as one angle. The question is to find BE. Whenever we want to use the sine or the cosine rule, there are four variables involved. And so in order to solve anything, three of the variables need to be given to us. When we want to find the length of BE, first we need to choose the triangle that we want to use. If you look at this diagram carefully, we have the big triangle ABD, but we also have many other smaller triangles within the triangle. So we have triangle ABE here, triangle BEC, as well as triangle CED. So altogether we have four triangles. When we want to find the length of BE, we have to choose this triangle, BEC. However, if you notice, we only have two information given to us. We only have two lengths of sides. And so we cannot use the sine or cosine rule yet. The first thing to do would be look for a triangle with three variables already given to you. So if we look at triangle CED, we have two lengths of side as well as one angle. So we can apply the sine and cosine rule to this triangle. From this triangle, the information that would be useful in order to find BE is to find this angle here. Once we get this angle, we can also find this angle. So in order to get this angle, we have to use the sine rule. To understand the formula for sine and cosine rule, you have to understand the variables. If you look at this triangle, the triangle can be any type of triangle. It doesn't have to be an equilateral triangle. Angle A will be opposite to side A. Angle B would be opposite to side B. And angle C would be opposite to side C. A, B and C are just random assignments. They don't have any specific order. The key point is that the angle opposing the side has the same letter. The sine rule states that the ratio of the sine of angle A to the length of A, which is the opposing side, is equal to the ratio of the sine of angle B to the length of its opposing side, B. And this is the same for sine C over C as well. How do we apply this to this question? We want to find this angle here, angle ECD. Sine of angle ECD over the length of the opposite side, which is 8, will be equal to sine of B, which is the angle that we have here, sine of 35, and the length opposite to the angle, which is 5.8. So sine 35 over 5.8. When we rearrange this, we make sine ECD the subject. We get 8 sine 35 over 5.8. And we find the inverse sine or arc sine of this value in the calculator. We will get a basic angle. We will get an acute angle. So when we look at this triangle here, now we have to look for whether there is an ambiguous case. In this case, this length, this side here, can also appear here with the same length so 5.8 and 5.8 so this triangle is also possible there are two possible triangles here so when we do arc sine of this value we get 52.292 degrees and 52.292 degrees will be this angle here not this angle of course it shouldn't be assumed that this is an obtuse angle from the diagram this information should be given to you if this is an obtuse angle, then it is not 52.292. And so, if this is 52.292, this length is the same as this length, and therefore it is an isosceles triangle. This will be 52.292 as well. So now we can get ECD by using 180 degrees minus this value. And we get 127.71. So, angle ECD is 127.71. Now, we've also managed to find this angle here, angle ECB. After using the sine rule, this is all the information that we have. Now, when we look at triangle BEC, we have three pieces of information from the triangle. We have two sides as well as one angle. When we have the length of two sides and the angle that is subtended by the two sides, like this, the angle in the middle here, then we can use the cost rule. There are two instances where we use the cost rule. One is like this, when we have two sides and the angle between them, as well as when we have the length of three sides. Then it is useful to use the cosine rule.
again when we're using the cosine rule it is important to understand the variables so a is simply the length of the side that is opposite of the angle a b is the length of the side opposite to angle b and c is the length of the side opposite to angle c the cosine formula is a square is equals to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a in this situation we have the length of two sides and one angle so the trick to using the cosine formula is the angle will be a so this will be cos of 52.292 degrees and since this angle is a this is the side a so be is actually the side a so you can substitute be square and b and c doesn't matter which you assign b and c so let's put in all the values so we have 11 square plus 5.8 square this side here minus 2bc so again we substitute 11 inside and 5.8 inside so now that we have this equation we can work it out we get be square is equals to 78.045 and when we get be will be square root of the answer which is 8.834 so we have the length of BE, which is 8.834 centimeters. Answers are normally given to two to three significant figures, so 8.83 centimeter. The next question is find angle BEC, this angle here, BEC. So now we have the length of three sides as well as one angle. We can use any of the formulas. We can use either the sine rule or the cosine rule. When you look at this triangle, I find the sine rule easier to use, so I'm going to choose using the sine rule. Sine A over A equals to sine B over B. We want to find angle BEC, so I'm going to make sine A sine of BEC, this angle here, and the side that is opposite to the angle is 11. So sine of BEC over 11 is equals to, this set must be already given to us to use the formula. So sine of 52.292 degrees over the side that is opposite, which is 8.834. Make sine BEC the subject of the equation, then we can do arc sine or inverse sine we get the value 80.1 degrees the angle is definitely 80.1 degrees find ae given that the area of triangle abe is 50 centimeters square so in this case we are going to be using the area formula when we're using the area formula the area of ABE will be equals to half of AB sine C. Notice that the angle that we use in the formula C has to be from the side that is not in the formula, not used in the formula. We are using side A and B. So angle C must be opposite of the side C, which we are not using in this formula. Let's look at this triangle. We have only one side. We have BE and we want to find AE. So we have this and this. So the angle C will be opposite of side C. So since this and this is A and B, this will be C. So the angle that we need to use in this formula is this angle here. Angle AEB. This is the angle that we need to find before we can use this formula. We can find the angle of CED here. CED. Because when we have CED and this angle, then we can find the angle AEB. So CED is equals to 180 degrees minus this angle and minus this angle because the total internal angle of a triangle is 180 degrees. So the answer that we get is 17.292. This angle is 17.292. Now that we have these two angles, we can get this angle here because the angle of a straight line is 180 degrees. So we have 180 degrees minus this and minus this. So we get 82.61 degrees. This is the angle AEB. Now that we have this angle, we can use the area formula. So the area of triangle ABE will be equals to half times A times B times sine C. I substitute the area, 50. AE and BE are the sides that we are using. So times AE times 8.834 and then times sine of C, which is sine of 82.61. We rearrange to make AE the subject of the equation. AE equals to 50 times 2 divided by 8.834 times sine of 82.61. And the answer that we get here is 11.4 cm. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do help support me by hitting that like button. It really does help because it tells YouTube that this is a useful video and YouTube will start promoting it to others as well. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.